luxurious hall. The sun's rays made their way through the windows, and the lit candelabra gave even more light. There was a sound of impact. The blonde's eyes darkened. She was on her knees, and contempt was visible in her sky-blue eyes. A drop of scarlet liquid appeared at the corner of his mouth. The brunette angrily asked the girl how she dared to bring Liliana to tears. The girl was sad that Duke Demian was her fiancé. With a malicious smile, Liliana assured the guy that everything was fine with her. Our heroine didn't care, because she no longer felt love, anger, or hatred, but only irritation. The girl felt like an idiot, because she fell in love with the Duke at first sight when she met him one day at an event. The blonde fell in love with Damien four years ago, and traveled long distances every day. The Duke asked the girl if she was still tired. The brunette was surprised that the girl was following him even on such a day. It was raining. She carefully handed her lover an umbrella. The girl, looking guilty, asked for forgiveness for the inconvenience, and she assured the Duke that she really wanted to see him. With a deft movement of his hand, Damien knocked the umbrella out of the blonde's hands. A few moments later, the guy fell to his knees and began to writhe in pain. His body trembled, and his breathing became heavy and clear. At that same second, the girl rushed to him, wanting to lend a helping hand. The blonde was ready to do anything to get his attention and help him recover from a long illness. The girl belonged to the Serkia Count family, which received the patronage of the Imperial family. Everyone knew that those in whom this blood flowed could use and pass on healing abilities from generation to generation. The Duke, seeing her abilities, offered to be his bride. After the offer to be his bride, the girl's heart began to beat wildly. Arian wanted to feel happy, not even suspecting that her lover did this only to use her. The girl consoled herself with the thought that if she tried, the brunette would look at her at least once. Unfortunately for the healer, Damien constantly postponed the wedding under any pretext and allowed himself to be touched only when he felt bad. Arian tolerated this attitude towards herself until her lover brought another girl to the castle. The duke ran into the room and asked his bride to heal the woman who was in his arms. Opening her eyes, Liliana saw the brunette's face and asked where she was. There was a genuine smile of happiness on the duke's face. One day after returning from a walk, the girl heard strange sounds in her room. When Arian opened the door, she found her lover cheating. That day the healer's feelings disappeared. The girl actually knew that all these three years of effort were in vain. Because the blonde was madly in love with the duke, she tried to deny everything. The healer told the guy that they could break off the engagement. Despite the internal pain, Arian realized that this would be better for everyone. The girl explained that she would leave her lover with his new passion so that they could live happily ever after. The blonde angrily took the engagement ring off her finger and threw it away. The healer said that she would no longer interfere with the duke's ability to build a happy life. Damien rushed after the girl trying to stop her. The duke was outraged that she wanted to break off the engagement, and he asked what was happening to her. The healer reported that there was no longer an idiot from the Serki family who truly loved him. Arian said that everything was over between them and pulled out her hand. A few moments later, the blonde's heart was pierced by a sword blade. The scarlet liquid began to quickly flood the luxurious carpets. The girl looked in horror at her fiancé, who pierced her through with a sword. She never thought that he would turn out to be a psycho. Standing next to the blonde, exhausted from pain, Damien explained that he was sure that she would be obedient. The girl asked herself why she so stupidly loved such insignificant trash as Demian. The duke insisted that he could not allow others to use her powers. The guy took the weapon out of the blonde's motionless body. The healer was sure that if she managed to return to the past, she would not make such a mistake again. Arian dreamed of tearing the guy's heart and soul to shreds, like he did to her. The last thing our heroine saw was the face of the hated, but once loved person. The girl's eyes quickly grew dark. It seemed to her that this was the end. Someone gently touched the blonde's hand. The healer hesitantly opened her sky-blue eyes. Arian couldn't believe her eyes. Sitting next to the bed holding her hand was her father, who died two years ago. He caressed his daughter's hand, quietly saying kind words. The man asked how it was possible to sleep so long on his birthday. The blonde admitted that he was scared when his daughter did not wake up for so long. Arian asked her father what he was talking about. Laughing, the man noticed that she had not woken up yet and asked her daughter to get up as soon as possible. The healer couldn't believe that those painful memories were just her dream. The girl asked her father what year it was. After hearing the answer, our heroine realized that she had returned to the past four years ago on her birthday. Tears of happiness quickly began to appear in Arian's eyes. The girl asked her father in surprise whether he really stood in front of her. The blonde felt guilty for a long time that the man, trying to please his stubborn daughter, went to the battlefield to get a gift for the Archduke, after which he left for another world after his mother. 
The healer was incredibly happy that her father was standing right in front of her. The blonde asked his beloved daughter why she was crying. The daughter threw herself into his arms and hugged her father tightly. Arian wondered if this was an ordinary dream. The man suggested that the girl had a nightmare. The father said to ask the cook to make all her favorite dishes. Patting his daughter's head, the count asked her to quickly get ready to go to the dining room. Having locked herself in the room, the healer realized that the events over which she had been worried for so long could not be an ordinary dream. Arian remembered the terrible days in the Archduke's house and also her miserable death. The blonde was not going to miss this chance. The healer was glad that Damien suffered from an illness that doctors could not usually cope with. The girl understood that the Duke did not yet know that only she could heal him. Arian realized that she could use this chance and destroy the traitor. The Countess realized that if she did not prepare properly, she would expose herself to danger. Arian was sure that she needed the power to protect her family and go to war in her father's place. The girl remembered that there was a man who fit perfectly on all these points. The blonde knew that despite the fact that Cassidin was a slave by birth, he became the commander of the Imperial Knights thanks to the help of the Crown Prince. The healer recalled that in a past life, the guy was described in many words. Arian knew that the slave was a great fencing master who appeared once every thousand years. The maid carefully combed the mistress's luxurious silky long hair. The healer understood that she could not lose her father in a bloody war again. The countess tried to convince herself that Cassidine was one of the few people who were much stronger than Damien. She was sure that the best swordsman in the entire empire would return from the war. Arian realized with a shudder that at that moment the guy was performing like a slave in gladiator fights. The girl knew that only a year later the crown prince would pay attention to the guy and bring him into the imperial family. The healer was determined to get the slave before the prince noticed the guy. The blonde understood that he would become a sword for their family. Arian was sure that compared to the past, she had changed. The girl was ready to do anything to protect herself and her father. Entering the dining room, the countess was delighted to see the tables laden with food. Smiling, the man reminded his daughter that she had a birthday on that day, and this is quite natural. The blonde asked the girl to eat more. The count asked Ariane if she wanted precious stones or a dress as a gift. The healer said that she had one wish. The blonde insisted that she wanted a younger brother. The man hesitated a little at such a request. The count asked what his daughter meant. The blonde couldn't believe that his daughter wanted him to get married again. Arian assured that this was not necessary, and she was going to bring him herself. The countess asked her father if he could trust her. The count claimed that he trusted only his daughter. The man was perplexed. He didn't understand why his daughter needed a younger brother. The healer explained that if war breaks out, one man from each family will have to go to battle. The blonde knew that violating this rule could result in deprivation of title and confiscation of property, or even the death penalty. Arian was sure that if she accepted into the family an unfortunate slave who suffered in gladiatorial battles, then it could solve the issue. The girl planned to communicate well with him. She hoped that she could send him to the battlefield instead of her already middle-aged father. The blonde understood that Cassidin could become the commander of the Imperial Knights. She was sure that the slave was the only person who could defeat Damien in battle. The blonde said that he only needed his daughter as his family. Arian suggested that her words might sound strange and asked her father to listen to her words once. The healer asked if he thought that it could become a big problem if others found out about her abilities. The girl explained that a strong person is always useful. The countess explained that because of this, she needed a younger brother who could protect her and her father. Ariane recalled that she had never asked the blonde for something like that. Smiling, the girl assured that she would bring an excellent and strong man who could protect them. The countess assured her father that he would definitely like him. The man admitted that he allegedly had no idea that his daughter could think about such a thing. The blonde believed that his daughter would not just throw words to the wind. The father was sure that Arian did this for reasonable reasons. The man noticed that his daughter was always smart beyond her years. The count said that the daughter could have brought her younger brother or someone else. An expression of incredible joy appeared on our heroine's face. The girl rushed to her father with delight, hugging him tightly. Finally, the man asked the blonde to bring the right person. The blonde warned that he would not call a suspicious person to enter the Count's house. Sasha noticed that the lady was beautiful. The maid asked Arian if she liked the earrings and necklace. The brown-haired woman was sure that the jewelry would certainly suit the Countess. Smiling, the lady assured that she really liked it. The girl asked the blonde where she was going on her birthday. The coachman carefully helped the blonde to get out of the carriage. The healer was glad that she did not see representatives of the imperial family here. The girl was determined to pick up the slave as quickly as possible before the prince noticed the guy. Arian asked the worker to take them to a better place. The clerk asked her ladyship to stand in line. The countess said that she would give him as much money as he needed. 
The brown-haired man quickly changed his mind and let the girl pass out of turn. The blonde said that as an apology for jumping the queue, she would pay for tickets for other spectators. The man asked with surprise whether my lady would pay for seats for everyone. Arian confirmed this with a smile. The blonde was well aware that her family still had a lot of money. The girl knew that in exchange for the exclusive right to treatment for the Imperial unit, they fully provided for Serki's family. This information was available only to a select few. In a past life, the blonde broke the agreement when she healed Damien. Arian, having shown her skills, refused to use them, because it seemed to her that this was the same love. The blonde didn't plan to make such an idiotic mistake in this life. Entering the amphitheater, the healer looked around and quickly found the purpose of her visit. The blonde, pointing his finger at the gladiator, assured that he had come only to look at him. The guy said that he was talking about that man with silver hair. More than half of the audience came to look at the guy with silver hair, because he looked soft, but at the same time fought well. Cassidine quickly sensed the girl's gaze and raised his amethyst eyes, peering straight into her soul. The blonde looked at the slave. She was surprised by his uniform, because the guy looked better than the rest. Arian was sure that he was there for eye candy, since appearance was not important for a gladiator. The presenter was sure that the audience had been waiting for this for a very long time. The organizer asked which of these slaves would be the last one alive. The brown-haired man said that before the battle begins, you need to listen to the rules. The man claimed that the weapon belonged to the slave who would take it first. The presenter argued that there was only one rule, kill your enemy and survive. The audience was delighted. The countess realized with sadness that the slaves were not even people for the organizers of the event. The blonde understood that the gladiators were just toys that could be thrown away if they suddenly became useless. Raising his staff, the brown-haired man announced that the battle was beginning. The delighted screams of the crowd could be heard in the stands. After the shackles were removed from the participants, they immediately rushed towards a variety of weapons. But only Cassadin was calm and did not get into the thick of things. Soon the gladiator slaves began to destroy each other for the amusement of the crowd. The spectators were delighted with the bloody spectacle. The blonde covered her face with her hand, trying to hold back the nausea that came over her. The girl was sad that slaves were treated worse than cattle. It was painful for Arian to see this with her own eyes in an arena drenched in human blood. Soon the brunette ran up to Cassidine and swung his sword at him. The guy deftly dodged the blow and knocked his opponent to the ground. The blonde, taking the sword from the ground with a lightning strike, cut the enemy's throat and stuck the sword in his side. Splashes of scarlet liquid were visible on the gladiator's pale face. Spectators watched with bated breath what was happening. And after the enemy was defeated, they began to shout out the name of the winner. The girl calmly watched the slave, while the blonde peered into her soul through his sky-blue eyes. The presenter said that the winner of this fight was Cassidin. The brown-haired man explained that it was quite rare to find such a handsome slave. The man said that the one who can pay the most will get a chance to spend a hot and passionate night with the winning slave. The countess was horrified to hear such a statement. The spectators began to bargain, wanting to temporarily get the winner for themselves for carnal pleasures. Soon the price rapidly increased from 10,000 to half a million. Raising her hand, Ariane said that she could offer five million. The countess reported that she did not, however, want to have Cassidine for one night. And I asked whether the offered amount would be enough to get the guy completely forever. The presenter was taken aback by such a proposal. The blonde asked if he would answer her question. After the girl bought the gladiator, the brown-haired man wished her a good time. The blonde looked over his shoulder and said that they needed to talk. The blonde began to unbutton his shirt, exposing his muscular torso. The countess, a little taken aback, asked what he was doing. The slave asked if this was why the girl ransomed him. Opening his light shirt, the guy said that he was ready to spend the night with his mistress right now. The healer said that she had brought him for the wrong reason. Arian admitted that she could not take her eyes off his eyes, which seemed to be begging for help. The lady understood that he would not be so wary of her. She was obliged to mix lies and truth. Taking his hand, the girl said that it hurt her to see that even on the back of his hand he had so many scars. Ariane explained that she initially thought of buying him back and simply letting him go. The countess shared her fears that he could, however, be dragged back into the gladiator arena and used to entertain the aristocrats. The blonde tightly squeezed the slave's hand, after which the guy's scars disappeared. Cassidin was incredibly surprised. He asked the lady how she could do such a miracle. The healer explained that this was the effect of a magical ointment that was secretly passed down in their family. The blonde asked why the girl used such a valuable thing for him. Arian assured that despite the value of the ointment, human life was much more valuable. Lowering his eyes, the slave admitted that he had killed many people. The girl, trying to support him, 
reminded him that he had to do something like this in order to survive. The healer recalled that Cassidin did not kill other gladiators because he wanted to. The mistress asked the guy why he became a gladiator slave and where his family was. Lowering his amethyst eyes, which were full of sadness, Cassidin said that all members of his family had died a long time ago. The blonde shared that he wandered around the world all alone and ended up in the arena. Raising his empty gaze, the guy asked the lady what kind of person she was. Arian said that she was the only daughter of Count Serki. The girl said that her mother died almost immediately after her birth. The blonde asked the guy how old he was. The slave stated that he had recently turned 18. The lady noticed that she was two years older. Arian asked if he wanted to become her younger brother. The guy asked in surprise if she really wanted it. The healer explained that in this way, Cassidin would be able to get rid of the mark of a slave and become part of the Count's family. The girl explained that in this case, he would no longer have to kill others, and no one can just ignore him. Smiling, Arian asked if he wanted to become part of the Count's family. Hope appeared in the slave's amethyst eyes. Cassidin said that if the lady wants this, then he is ready for anything. The girl decided to introduce herself again. The slave gently touched Mistress Arian's hand. The blonde said that the young man no longer needed to address her as mistress, because they would become a family. Smiling, the guy thanked his older sister, noticing that she had a warm heart. The beating of her heart echoed in the girl's ears. The healer assumed that it was because the guy easily adapts to his environment, or because of his strange expression, which appeared only for a moment. Arian planned to make the blonde part of their family to protect her father and herself, and what he thought himself, she didn't care. Smiling, the girl offered to go to the right place. The blonde hoped that her younger brother would become her shield and sword. The man was a little taken aback that his daughter brought a gladiator slave into the house and began calling him younger brother. The count explained that he would understand perfectly well if Arian decided to make him her guard, but not her younger brother. The father asked the healer what she was thinking about. The blonde said that he would immediately kick out this terrible person. The girl could not understand her father's anger because she had warned him in advance that she would bring a slave. The healer apologized for not consulting the man, and she said that she had thought of everything in advance. She explained that if war comes, the Count will have to go to the battlefield as the only man from their family. Arian assured that if there was another man in the family, the father would be able to avoid a similar fate. She explained that Cassidin was a very talented person who would be able to return even after the war. Looking at his daughter in surprise, the Count asked if she had planned this from the very beginning. The blonde's hands trembled violently, but the healer gently took his hands to calm him down a little. The Count said that he needed time to be alone. He asked to be allowed to collect his thoughts. Walking out of her father's room, the blonde saw a beautiful sunset. The girl remembered with a shudder of heart that at the same time she died at the hands of Damien. The healer despised the duke for healing his heart, otherwise he would take the sword to hers. The countess heard the cries of birds, and she realized that they were similar to human ones who did not let her forget because of whom she died. The blonde dreamed of doing Damien a thousand times worse than he did to her. Arian understood that she could not miss the slave, and he was supposed to become her younger brother. Entering the room, the girl asked with a smile whether Cassidin had washed himself. The countess asked the servant to bring food directly to this room, since her younger brother was hungry. Cassidine asked his sister if he looked strange. The healer assured that not at all, and I noticed that the clothes he had chosen suited him well. The girl was very glad that this room found its owner. Having lowered his eyes, the blonde said that he supposedly believed that someone like him shouldn't receive so much attention. The elder sister asked Cassidine not to speak like that. Arian reminded the guy that she brought him to the mansion to become a member of their family. The girl assured that she could still convince her father. The countess squeezed the slave's hand tightly, and he promised in return to prove his worth. The blonde asked what else the guy needed. The healer said that she could order it if she needed anything. The gladiator explained that he had lived with a sword in his hands for so long that he felt uncomfortable without it. The brother told the blonde that he would be glad if he had any sword. The healer asked if there was anything else he liked besides the ball. Cassidin explained that this was enough. The slave assured that even at that moment it seemed to him that he was in a dream. Taking the girl by the hand, the blonde said that he really liked her. The guy admitted that from their first meeting, he could not take his eyes off her. Closing his eyes and kissing her hand, Cassidine assured that if this was a dream, then he dreamed of never waking up. The guy promised that even if Arian leaves him, he will never hate his sister for it. The healer was amazed that a man who was treated like an animal, in one day of their meeting, threw out the right words. Arian suspected that there was some reason why he was still alive. Looking into the amethyst eyes, she realized that he was silently begging not to leave him completely alone in this cruel world.
The mistress told the guy that she had no intention of leaving him. The girl asked the blonde to feel free being next to her. The healer understood that it was better to play along with him until the younger brother opened his heart to her. Arian wanted to be caring and good, unlike others. Leaving the room, the blonde asked Cassidin to rest and not worry about anything else. The sister told the guy that he could come to her room whenever he wanted, because she was very close. The blonde wished his beloved a good night. In the dim light of the candles, the healer carefully read the text of a small book. The girl was glad that she managed to find a book about healing and poisonous herbs that grew only in the north. The blonde remembered that around this time in the past, the emperor was completely cured. Ariani remembered that at that moment her family became much richer. That's when rumors spread throughout the county that they had a secret mine. The blonde remembered that at a reception in honor of the crown prince's 20th birthday, she met a brunette. The healer remembered that a lot of her family's money went to Damien, and as a result she met a tragic end. The blonde did not plan to forgive the traitor. The candle has already gone out, and the girl understood that there was only a month left before the reception in honor of the crown prince's birthday. The healer laid her head on a soft pillow, but could not fall asleep for a long time. Many different thoughts were spinning in Arian's head. The countess knew she needed to learn more in order to stand against Damien. She couldn't afford to miss a single piece of information. When the girl began to fall into the long-awaited sleep, there was a persistent knock on the door. Cassidine told his sister that he wanted to tell her something. Rising sharply from the cozy bed, the girl asked her brother to come in. Looking down, the guy said that he knew it was impolite to come at such a time, but he could not sleep. Remind the slave that the countess said that he could come at any time. Therefore, I decided to come to her no matter what. Smiling, the blonde said that she was reading a book and just lay down. Cassidin asked what kind of book it was. The guy hesitantly read the title, which made the blonde very surprised. The blonde explained that the rarer product was much more expensive, and he had to learn to read and write, as well as learn aristocratic etiquette. He sadly argued that slaves were a common commodity. Arian was surprised because the more the slaves knew, the more difficult it was to control them. The girl understood that usually in the Seville Empire, slaves could not learn to write or read. The blonde understood that it was too early to interrogate the guy, since he was still wary of her. The girl asked Cassidy not to worry, and promised that this would not happen again. The slave admitted that he could not sleep because of his worries, and he asked whether the lady would mind him lying down next to her. Arian was a little taken aback by this question. The healer remembered the guy's first question, which he asked her after his ransom from slavery. The blonde quickly realized that this was a test. The countess was determined to prove the sincerity of her intentions. Smiling, the girl lifted the blanket and told the guy that if he wanted, he could lie down next to her. Ariani noticed that her younger brother was very worried about the change of scenery. The blonde said that every night he dreamed of those whom he was forced to kill. Cassidin explained that in his nightmares, the murdered gladiator slaves would reach out to him with their bloody hands and flimsy necks, asking in whispers why they were dead. The countess reminded the guy that this was not his fault. The blonde explained that the murder was murder, and there was no justification for it. Arian said that this was normal, because he was consumed by guilt towards the murdered man. The girl drew his attention to the fact that he did this not for pleasure, but for the sake of his protection. The healer wondered if she appeared in the same way in Demian's dreams. The blonde admitted that it was the first time in his life that he had heard such words. The sister asked Cassidine what kind of life he had. The former gladiator explained that before her appearance there was nothing special or interesting in his life. The healer was very sorry that she could not heal mental wounds, unlike physical ones. Ariani recalled that over time, even the deepest wounds heal, and the main thing was not to open them again. The blonde assured that only good days lay ahead for her younger brother. The girl gently touched his cheek with her hot hand. Cassidin noticed that she was the only person in the arena who shone so brightly. The blonde thanked his big sister for taking him with her. The healer closed her eyes quite quickly after a short time. Small streams of fresh air swayed the translucent curtain, through which the twinkling of distant stars could be seen. The clock ticked its second hand rhythmically. Arian opened her eyes slightly, feeling the guy's gaze. Her brother gently pushed a strand of silky blonde hair away from her face. Hanging over the girl, the blonde wished her sweet dreams and carefully covered her with a blanket. When Cassidin left the room, the healer realized that he was lying to her. The countess reminded herself that she, too, was pretending to be a sweet sister and becoming like him. Arian realized that in the gladiatorial arena, there are no other feelings other than cruelty. The girl remembered that she did not hope that he would immediately trust her. She realized that she was only waiting for the moment for the former slave to adjust to his new life. The healer was sure that the blonde would definitely meet Damien at the banquet. 
Until then, the Countess planned to add the slave to the family registry and help him free himself. The girl understood that the main problem was that she knew nothing about her brother. Arian only met him once in her past life. At that moment, the blonde stood behind the crown prince, and then they only crossed glances. The healer planned to find out more about him. The blonde planned to give the guy everything he wanted and fulfill all his dreams. Walking quickly towards Mrs. Sasha, she reported that the owner was calling the girl. The countess asked the maid where Cassidin had gone. The girl just awkwardly blurted out something. Standing on one knee, the blonde threw a small bag at his feet. The guy's snow-white shirt was stained with blood. Picking up the linen bag with herbs, the blonde realized that this was indeed the smell of incense from the mountain temple he had recently spoken about. Arian asked her father if he really sent the guy to get medicinal herbs in a cave near a steep cliff in the west. The healer recalled that a monster lived in that area. The girl asked why Cassidin went looking for these herbs. The Count admitted that last night he kept thinking about how the ransomed slave felt in the new place. The man came to the conclusion that if the guy could pass the test, he would welcome him. The father informed Arian that he had passed the first test and he would give him the next task. The healer asked the Count to wait a little. Hanging over her younger brother, the girl asked if everything was okay with him. Smiling, the blonde assured that he was simply stained with the blood of the animals that were in the temple. The girl said that it seemed to her that it was possible to do without the other stages. The countess assured that no matter what task the father gave the guy, he would cope. Arian drew the man's attention that Cassidin had brought medicinal herbs and proved his worth. The girl asked permission to add the former slave to the family registry as her younger brother. The healer assured that he would certainly become the pride of their family. The blonde, with her hand on her heart, said that if the father did not accept the guy now because of his slave status, he could exclude her from the register. Arian understood that she was more like a capricious child, but she could not do anything about it. The healer understood that the issue of adoption should not be delayed. The man assured that his daughter was tearing his heart apart. He asked why the girl was so concerned about the fate of this slave. The blonde reminded the Count that he loved to enjoy herbal tea, and it was grown by slaves on plantations. Ariani explained that most of them were once aristocrats, but at one point they lost everything that was dear to them, including their position. The blonde reminded that the title was not eternal. The girl explained that social status was like a summer night's dream or frost on the branches of trees on a winter morning. The healer assured that Cassidin was the same as them, and she asked the guy to allow him to become part of their family. The man sighed heavily, and joked that there are no parents in the world who won an argument with their children. The blonde agreed to do as his daughter wanted. Rushing into her father's arms, the healer thanked him. Count ask your daughter not to stutter again about exclusion from the register. The man admitted that at that moment, his soul sank to his feet. The blonde asked who his daughter was so smart. Extending her hand, the girl asked Cassidin to come over, reminding him that they were now one family. Smiling, the brother sincerely thanked the girl and father. Ariani noticed that everyone had left safely, and everything was going according to her plan. The starry sky hangs over the luxurious mansion. A bright light was visible from the windows of the house. On a small tray there were several towels and a glass of wine. Drops of hot water slowly flowed from the faucet. The blonde took off his clothes and went into the hot bathroom. The guy's body was covered with many scars. Cassidine replayed his older sister's words in his head. The muscular body was soon immersed in the hot, relaxing water. The blonde couldn't stop thinking about the girl's weirdness. The blonde realized that he had made an impulsive decision. The guy was very curious to see the lady angry. He realized that he had behaved like a foolish child. Cassidine understood that the countess was a good person, but this should not interfere with his goal. The blonde planned to take advantage of the girl. He didn't care what the future said. Ariane walked through a huge market. The seller greeted her ladyship. The girl thought about giving Cassidine a gift in honor of becoming part of their family. The healer's gaze was drawn to the unusual sword. The blonde took the blade in her hands and carefully examined the goods. The brunette noticed that the lady had a keen eye and excellent taste. The merchant said that this sword has a real history. The man assured that the weapon was used by the crown prince of the ruling kingdom of Hairan. The girl suspected the merchant of lying, because such an eminent sword would not have been sold and would not have collected dust in the display case. Leaning over the buyer's ear, the brunette announced the price. The blonde understood why no one bought this weapon. Without hesitation, the healer handed the merchant a bag of coins. In the evening, the girl told her brother that she had a gift. She knocked hesitantly on the door, but there was no answer. Arian walked into the room, trying to find her little brother. Cassidin was a little surprised when the countess entered his room. On his muscular body there was only a light robe. 
The blonde apologized for barging in without asking. She explained that she was worried because he did not answer. The guy insisted that he was in the bathroom and therefore could not have heard. Holding out the box, the girl asked her brother to open the gift. He asked the healer where she got this luxurious dagger. Hariani assured that the weapons were sold in a shop that was nearby. The girl reported that the merchant assured her that there was no sheath for this weapon. Cassidy explained that the weapon must have a sheath. Looking at the guy with surprise, the countess asked how he knew this. The brother told the girl that such daggers usually always come with a scabbard. The guy was convinced that such a good product should come with a kit. The blonde explained that, according to the seller, the scabbard was lost long ago. Arian said that the merchant allegedly claimed that this sword was used by the crown prince of some kingdom. The healer extended her hand to the guy and asked if she should order a new sheath. Cassidin insisted that this was not necessary, since in the gladiatorial arena, he dealt with different types of weapons, and this was not a problem. Smiling, the guy explained to his sister that he was very happy about this gift. The countess welcomed the former slave as a new member of her family. The blonde noticed that she was too kind to him. Cassidin was sure that it was great luck for him to meet such a humane person. The brother explained to the girl that if not for her help, he would have continued to fight in the arena. Taking the healer by the shoulders, Cassidin said that he no longer wanted to lose this warmth. Holding the girl tightly to him, the brother explained that at the stadium, he saw only one person, her. The former gladiator said that the blonde was for him an angel who had descended from heaven to him. Arianne explained to the guy that she was grateful that he became part of her family. The girl told Cassidine that sisters and brothers usually don't hug so tightly. The blonde admitted that he didn't remember the last time he felt something like that and asked for forgiveness. Taking the guy by the hand, the blonde explained that if it's hard for him, he can always rely on her. The healer understood that she looked very stupid in his eyes. The blonde hoped that her brother would continue to think of her as a sweet and stupid girl. Arian promised that if he couldn't sleep, she would sing him a lullaby. The countess suggested that the next day we go to the garden and admire the flowers. Arian suggested that her brother fill the following days with only happy moments. The healer hoped that as slowly as the paint dissolves in water, it would dissolve in it without a trace. Cassidine asked his older sister if he could come to her room. With a forced smile, the girl promised that she would hold his hand until he fell asleep. The blonde smiled lightly and asked if ordinary brothers and sisters did this. The healer offered to be an unusual brother and sister. Arian did not know how this strange game on the edge would end. Lying in the girl's soft bed, the brother asked why she wanted to accept him so much that she even decided to be excluded from the register. The blonde reminded him that she promised him. Noticing the surprise on the guy's face, the healer explained that he himself said that even if she leaves him, he will not hate him. Arian assured that she would not leave him. The blonde explained that first of all, she did not want to see his tears and hear his plea not to leave. The girl said that she just wanted to make the young man happy. Gently straightening her hair, the former slave said that he had already become the happiest. When the healer closed her eyes, she could not stop feeling his persistent, searching gaze, but still tried to relax and fall asleep. The countess wanted to lower Cassidin's guard. That night, as well as the next, Damien appeared in Arian's dreams. When the blonde opened her eyes, she felt like crap. Arian looked around and realized that her younger brother had already gone home. The healer's attention was drawn to the fact that one of her books was not on the shelf. Sasha entered the room and bowed. With a smile, the brown-haired woman told the lady that she had found out what the lady had asked for. In a whisper, the maid said that the guy's past was very strange and mysterious. Sasha suggested that the guy might not be a slave at all. The lady asked the brown-haired woman to tell her in more detail. Sasha said that it was quite difficult for her, but she still managed to find the slave trader who came across Cassidin several years ago. The man came across the blonde man as he lay unconscious on the road. The blonde's clothes were quite expensive, so the slave trader decided that he was of noble origin. The slave trader remembered the guy well, since that meeting came as a surprise to him. The brown-haired man even perfectly remembered the place where he found that guy. The blonde doubted that Cassidin was lying. The countess knew very well that manners are difficult to learn, but aristocrats lived side by side with etiquette from birth. The girl understood that she should be more attentive with her ward. Arian, praising the maid, reached for a small box. The healer took out a luxurious decoration from there and asked the maid to accept this gift. Confused, the brown-haired woman turned to Milady. Arian asked if these precious stones were not enough. The blonde said that she could give more if necessary. Sasha clarified that she did not do this for the sake of compensation. The maid assured that it was enough for her that she was able to help her mistress in some way. The brown-haired woman noticed that the maid had not been looking like herself lately. The maid asked for forgiveness and explained that she herself did not know what she was saying. 
Sasha asked the girl to forget what she said. The aristocrat explained that she had been very tired lately, so she understood what she was talking about. Arian asked the brown-haired woman if she was very worried about her. The girl asked the maid to have a good rest that day. The blonde said that she sincerely hoped that the girl would accept the gift of the jewel. The healer reported that her hands were numb and asked Sasha to take the reward and go to rest. The blonde realized that after death and returning to the past, most events remained unchanged, but she noticed Sasha for the first time. With tears of happiness in her eyes, the maid clutched a jewelry box to herself. Arian understood that if she had had a faithful maid at that time, everything could have turned out completely differently. Unfortunately, Damien did not allow the girl to bring her servants. The healer was like a bird in a cage. The blonde recalled with pain in her heart that the duke gave her attention only when he needed her strength. Due to the fact that she was a jilted bride, she became an ideal prey for bullying. The countess tried to remember what expression she had on her face when she first met Damien. Arian showed her brother the luxurious garden of their estate. The blonde asked the guy if he liked walking along the many paths of the garden. Cassidin was amazed by the beauty of this wonderful place. Taking one of the flowers, the guy explained that the blue roses looked like his sister. The countess looked at her brother in bewilderment and asked why he compared her to this flower. The guy explained that, unlike red roses, blue ones were very rare. The blonde explained that in the language of flowers, blue roses meant impossibility, since these flowers were quite difficult to grow. The brother admitted that he saw them for the first time. Cassidin was delighted by the beauty of the blue roses and could not take his eyes off them. The guy explained that because of this, the roses looked very much like their sister. A barely noticeable smile appeared on the girl's face. The healer explained that even the most beautiful flowers in the world are still doomed to fade. The blonde asked if their fleeting rarity made sense. Ariani explained that the moment the petals begin to fall off, the gardener will cut them off. Handing the flower to his sister, the blonde explained that this was not what he meant. The healer explained that not all people are happy when compared to flowers. Cassidine promised to remember this. The countess reported that a book had disappeared from her shelf. She asked her brother if he had taken the book. Smiling, the girl suggested that someone could have stolen it, although it was not important to her. Arian asked if the young man remembered the book he saw last time. The girl recalled that it was dedicated to the plants of the north. With his hand on his heart, the brother assured that he could help find her. The blonde looked at the guy with wariness, because she realized that while she was sleeping, only Cassidin could take her. The girl understood that from the very first meeting, he hid his personal life behind a mask. The countess understood that all this was false and a lie. The healer could not understand why the crown prince would treat such a person well. Arian enjoyed how the calm days flew by with a serene breeze. Fortunately for the girl, her father officially accepted Cassidin into the family in exchange for the fact that she would hide the guy's origin by all means. When the sister was with Cassidine at the market, everyone was sure that the guy really was the son of an aristocrat. The blonde rejoiced that it would never occur to anyone that he was a former slave. Trying to calm her curiosity, Arian asked who the guy's parents were. The blonde said that his father was very courteous, and his mother was famous for her strength. The former slave assured that his parents were very good people. The guy assured that he had no brothers and sisters. Cassidine reported that he was very pleased to walk with his sister. The healer asked the guy if he needed anything else. The blonde said that he had no need, and he still longed to accompany her. The countess said that in a week, there would be a reception in honor of the crown prince's birthday. Noticing the bewilderment in Cassidin's eyes, she explained that their family was invited to the imperial palace every year. But this time, their father would not be able to go due to business. Smiling, the brother asked the healer to take him with her. Arian hesitated a little, explaining that there would be many strangers in the palace. The blonde admitted that he was afraid that someone might kidnap his little sister. The girl calmly said that she was going to take her brother with her anyway. Arian assured that there was no point in kidnapping her. The brother assured the blonde that she simply had no idea how charming she was. The blonde told Cassidine that she would give him everything he wanted anyway, and there was no need to continue checking her for lice. The guy asked his sister how he could not believe her. The blonde explained that it was the first time his soul felt so warm. The brother assumed that this warmth came from the fact that he really liked her. The healer asked why he stole her things. The girl reminded me that the book went missing three weeks ago. Arian said that she knew that he took her and put her back. Cassidine claimed that he did not steal the book. The countess recalled that that night he slept in her room. The girl was amazed that despite everything, her brother spoke of his innocence. Arena suggested that he had his own reasons for doing this. The healer said that it didn't matter to her that he stole the book, but what was important was that her younger brother lied to her. Cassidin asked why she didn't point to him right away. 
taking his hand, the blonde explained that they were now one family. Firmly squeezing his sister's hand, the blonde admitted that she was a ray of light in the endless darkness. The brother assured that he would not dare to lie to her anymore. Aaron explained that he could take any book or ask him to find it. The guy thanked his sister for her care and kindness. Cassidine admitted that he was curious about what books she was reading. The brother realized that he should have told the truth from the very beginning. The girl asked if he liked anything on the way. The blonde asked the guy to tell her if he wanted to buy anything. Confused, Cassidine said that he had some desire. The blonde said that he wants a sister. Putting a friendly smile on her face, she realized that she was in vain expecting an adequate answer from her brother. The girl was wary, because after that day the blonde did not visit her room for some time. Ariane was reading the latest news in the newspaper. One of the pages reported that Archduke Damien became the winner of the Imperial Fencing Competition. The healer was sure that even with such a weak body, the brunette won the competition. Arian realized that the monster will always remain a monster. She was sure that no one knew about Damien's bad heart. In a past life, the blonde followed him around for a whole year, but found out about the illness only when the Duke lost consciousness. The healer's thoughts were interrupted by a persistent knock on the door. Cassidin told his sister that he had come. The blonde asked the guy to come in. Arian asked her brother why he had not visited her lately. Smiling, the brother asked if she was expecting his visit. The girl admitted that she sometimes thought about him. The blonde said that he was glad that he was not indifferent to her. The healer remembered that he could not sleep and suggested that he was now accustomed to the change of environment. Cassidin told his sister that being close to her was much more important to him. The girl remembered that her brother still went to his place at dawn. The blonde lay down next to her on the soft bed. The guy explained that if others found out about this, they might have problems. He insisted that this was the only reason why he left. Ariani claimed that if he really didn't want problems, he wouldn't come to her at night. Cassidin explained that she was beautiful in the light of the sun, but no less beautiful in the darkness of the night. And he admitted that he liked to look into her deep sky-blue eyes, catching the reflections of the moon on her hair. Arian explained that she also thought about a lot of things when she looked into his amethyst eyes, especially when he wrinkled his forehead, looking into emptiness. The blonde explained that she always wondered what he was thinking about at such moments. Extending his massive palm to her face, the guy assured that he was only thinking about her. The healer, not paying attention to the flattering words, recoiled from him, explaining that the maid saw him leave the estate in the middle of the night a few days ago. The girl asked her brother what he was doing outside. The blonde assured that he went to get some fresh air. The countess kept silent about what Sasha told her. Supposedly, her brother returned at dawn. At night, the full moon dissolved into twilight and was replaced by dawn. The brown-haired woman, while choosing a luxurious dress, asked to urgently bring bobby pins. Soon the robes and jewelry were put on. The maids were delighted with my lady's beauty. The brown-haired woman assured that her ladyship would definitely become the main star at this reception. Sasha admitted that she was jealous of her ladyship's dance partner. The maid asked if Arian liked her dress. After the compliments, a barely noticeable smile appeared on Arian's face. The girl knew very well that most of the attention would fall on her younger brother. When the blonde entered the room, he joked that for a second he dreamed that he saw an angel. Soon the luxurious carriage stood at the gates of the estate. The maids wished the duchess a cheerful welcome. Cassidin, standing by the carriage, extended his hand to his sister, wanting to help. The girl hesitantly extended her hand, touching his rough palm. Arian informed the blonde that the seat opposite her was empty. The blonde said that he could already let go of her hand. The guy admitted that he wanted to spend a little time with her. Laying his head on the duchess, the brother noticed that she smelled very pleasant. The blonde wished that time would stop for a while. Cassidin was sure that at the reception, everyone would be staring at his sister. The guy suggested that he would be angry because of this. The duchess ordered her brother to stop these jokes. The healer asked why he behaved in such an inappropriate manner. Arian recalled that he was her younger brother. The blonde said that she was sincerely wondering why he was lying. The girl said that she knew that he was unlikely to admit the reason and said that she still wanted to know. Smiling, the blonde asked if her brother would consider this greed on her part. Outside the window, one could see fields where peasants were actively reaping wheat with huge sickles, and the children of commoners played in the dense thickets. The guy was furious that Arian didn't believe him. The blonde assured that it was not so. She noticed that when he lied, the corners of his lips rose upward, and his eyelashes trembled slightly in front of his eyes. Smiling, Arian explained that the young man did not know how to lie at all. The blonde asked his sister who she really was. Soon the outlines of the luxurious imperial palace began to be visible outside the window. The healer looked out the window and said that they had already arrived. 
The girl remembered that she often visited these places, especially in childhood. She knew that the county's lands were so close to the Imperial Palace that in case of danger they could come to the rescue as quickly as possible. Because of this, there were rumors among the people that she was laying claim to the title of Crown Princess. Looking out the window, the brother said with delight that they were finally at their destination. The guy carefully extended his hand to his sister, trying to help. Noticing his gaze on her, Arian asked if he wanted to say something. The blonde explained that on that day, his sister was incredibly beautiful. The healer explained that he was full of compliments today. Cassidy assured that he would be more grateful if she called him courageous. The blonde suggested that her brother go with his version. The girl handed the envelope with the invitation to one of the knights. The guy asked who was next to the countess. The aristocrats began to discuss the handsome man when they saw the guy for the first time. The brown-haired man asked who the guy was. The healer claimed that he was her younger brother. Standing arm in arm with Cassidine, the blonde turned her gaze to the luxurious hall of the estate. A hall opened before the eyes of the guests, which was full of crystal statues. Ariane looked around and realized that everything remained the same as it was many years ago. The girl knew that Damien would be late for the appointment that day. The blonde understood that there was only one difference from the past. The healer's thoughts were interrupted by the guy's gentle voice. Cassidin asked his little sister what she was thinking about. The girl with fiery red hair approached Lady Circia with a smile. Christine bowed and said that she was honored that the Countess remembered her. Evalil Christine was a lady from the family of Count Christine, who became rich in diamond mining. With a shudder of heart, the healer realized that more than a hundred slaves had died in the mines. Arian realized that she was the one who started spreading rumors that her family had a hidden mine. The blonde understood that Evalil did this because the Countess had precious stones that she did not have. Confused, Evalil asked the blonde who was near her. Bowing with a friendly smile, Cassidin introduced himself. The healer said that the guy was her younger brother. The girl understood that the aristocrats could start laughing among themselves, like a pack of dogs that surrounded their prey. Confused, the blonde said that she did not know that Count Serki had a son. Unable to bear it, the girl expressed her dissatisfaction, because she was sure that the reason why the guy did not appear in society was that the countess wanted to keep him only for herself. Arian didn't want to waste your mental strength on this chaos. The ladies began to discuss how such a great man could be hidden. Evalil asked if Mr. Cassidine had a lover. The brunette said that she wanted to be the first to ask about it. The girl invited the blonde to invite him to her house. With his eyes downcast, the guy said that he didn't have a beloved, but there was already one person in his heart. Without trying to contain her curiosity, the duchess asked who the lucky girl was. The blonde's eyes sparkled as if they were made of amethysts. Cassidine explained that when they first met, she was dressed in a luxurious blue dress, and around her neck was a necklace of blue sapphires. The blonde admitted that he couldn't take his eyes off her. The guy explained that she was so beautiful that it seemed a sin to take his eyes off her. Cassidin said that since then, his heart completely belonged to this girl, and there was no room for others. Panic flashed in Arian's eyes. The girls asked the handsome guy what this lucky girl's last name was. The host offered to meet His Highness the Prince, the small son of the Empire. As the guy walked along the luxurious burgundy carpet, all the aristocrats bowed their heads. Leon de Crassaviel. The prince sitting on the throne thanked everyone who came despite being busy. Arian remembered that the prince was originally supposed to take Cassidin as a close confidant. She realized that this was the best choice to protect her family. The girl tried to force herself to stop feeling guilty. The blonde asked the guests to forget their problems on this wonderful day and enjoy. The aristocrats raised their glasses filled with expensive wine and congratulated his highness. The blonde noticed that there was madness in her brother's eyes, and the expression on his face was strange. The healer tried to understand what was happening. Soon Leon dropped his glass, covering his mouth with a pale hand. The blonde fell from the luxurious throne unconscious. The aristocrats and guards quickly ran up to his highness. Leon's face showed pain. The brown-haired man realized that someone had poured poison into the prince's glass. The healer froze, realizing that in her past life there was no such thing as the blonde losing consciousness. The girl clearly remembered how they were at the reception until the night, and Damien arrived late. The healer looked at her younger brother with horror. Arian could not understand the motive, since in his previous life he was the most faithful servant of the prince. The healer suggested that the guy was the prince of the kingdom of Heron, which had completely disappeared from the maps. The girl understood that this was the only explanation for what happened. The blonde could not understand why in a past life the brother had been Leon's close associate for three years. Arian assumed that this was an ingenious plan for revenge. The girl could understand him because she also hid her feelings for a long time. 
Gently touching her brother's hand, Arian asked if he was the prince of the kingdom of Haran. Looking at the healer with panic, the guy asked what she said a moment ago. The knight furiously announced that no one would be able to leave this place until the end of the investigation. The brown-haired man, standing at the door, explained that this was an order from the emperor, since the criminal could be at the banquet. The man warned that if someone behaves suspiciously or tries to force their way out, that person will immediately be considered a criminal. One of the aristocrats asked in surprise whether there could be a criminal among them. The brown-haired man asked who dared to do such a thing on the prince's birthday. The man said that he was ready to swear on his title that he did not do this. The darkened knight said that all the details would be revealed after the investigation. Ariani held her brother's hand tightly. The girl understood that he was trembling not because of fear, but because of his rage towards her. Sighing heavily, the blonde told her brother that everything was fine and asked him not to do this again. The healer explained that she was saying this for his sake and promised to protect him. The knight informed Countess Serkia that His Highness the Emperor asked her to go into the hall. The blonde said that she understood. The girl realized that there would be rumors again that she would become the future empress. Cassidine sadly looked after his sister with sympathy. Bowing, the blonde greeted the shining son of the empire. The emperor ordered the girl to cure his son as quickly as possible. Looking at the prince, Arian realized that the poison had already spread throughout her body. Hanging over the blonde, the girl realized that the poison had neither color nor smell. The healer touched the guy's wrist and realized that the poison had managed to spread throughout the blood in the body. Arian tried to remember which of the poisonous herbs had no color or smell, but it was very toxic. The blonde realized that the poisonous butterfly plant was one of those that grew only in the north. The girl realized that the book that Cassidin stole contained a recipe for hiding the smell. The blonde understood that if she had not managed to arrive in time, the prince could have remained bedridden forever. The countess realized that her brother had truly gone mad. Arian gently touched the prince's chest and used her magic. Soon Leon's breathing became even and deep. Looking up, the girl said that she had removed all the energy of the poison. The countess's sky-blue eyes hid the storm that was raging in her soul. Leon soon came to his senses, but his father reported that he felt relieved. The emperor promised to be sure to thank the healer. The man said that she could have asked for anything in return for the help provided. The blonde explained that she only did what she had to do. Wary, the emperor asked who dared to do this on Leon's birthday. He suggested that the criminal apparently really wanted to die. The healer reported that she was able to detect the components of the poison that was used to poison the prince. Arian understood that she could use the emperor's trust to her advantage. The countess asked for forgiveness and hesitated a little. His highness said that everything was fine and asked the healer to tell him. Looking up, Arian said that the main component was a poisonous butterfly plant that grew only in the north. She understood that the only way to save Cassidin was to transfer the blame to someone else. The girl knew that the emperor's younger brother was the ruler of the north. Arian knew that Damien was the only child he left behind. The blonde explained that the plant of the poisonous butterfly was very toxic, that it can only be determined by its smell, but if you mix it with jade powder, the smell will disappear. The healer understood that this would be enough to sow suspicion. Arian learned that the brunette's father was interested in the throne, but Damien was different. The girl was wary that even when the prince was in this state, he never showed up. The healer understood that even if the traitor managed to avoid accusations of poisoning, he would definitely not be able to avoid inspection from the emperor. The blonde insisted that she would never dare lie to him. Arian noticed that her little brother was very cute. The healer said that it was time for her to go as she had finished the procedure. The emperor stopped the lady and explained that he had one more request to make of her. The man asked Arian to stay with his son until he felt better. A little taken aback, the blonde asked if he had gone somewhere. The emperor said that he could not keep all the aristocrats in the hall. A barely noticeable smile appeared on the countess's face. The girl realized that no one suspected Cassidin of the crime. Bowing, the blonde said that she would fulfill the emperor's request without any problems. The blonde said that he relied on her and headed towards the exit from the luxurious room. His highness thanked the girl again with a smile. Arian was surprised that the emperor trusted her so much. The blonde sincerely hoped that the man was not going to make her the prince's wife. Leon sat down on a chair that was upholstered in velvet near the bed, and the healer wondered when he would come to his senses. Arian wondered what her brother was doing at the moment. She sincerely hoped that Cassidin wasn't causing any more problems. A barely audible sound came from the prince's lips. Jumping up sharply from her chair, the healer asked his highness if he could hear her. The blonde assumed that he was delirious. A little embarrassed, Arian began to button his snow-white shirt. The prince looked at the healer in surprise. 
The blonde asked the healer who she was and what she did. Leon was furious that she dared to touch him. Trying to be polite, Arian explained that she was a healer from the Cirque family. The blonde explained that she had cured him of the poison in his body. The countess explained that if she had been a little late, he could have died. The guy warily asked her to repeat her words. Arian assumed that the emperor had not said anything to the prince. Peering into her face, the guy assured that he remembered. The prince realized that the Cirque family was the only family of healers in the country. Leon realized that standing in front of him was the strongest among all the healers. The blonde asked if he could see her incredible skills. The guy extended his hand to the healer. The countess explained that she would not succeed, since she had already completely cured him, and there were no other victims nearby. Putting his hand on his heart, the prince said that he suddenly fell ill there. The healer quickly knelt down in front of him and squeezed his left hand tightly. The blonde asked for forgiveness, and assured that everything was fine with his highness. The girl realized that she managed to remove all the remnants of the poison. The healer reported that she found nothing, and the young man's heartbeat was fine. Arian convinced the prince that he was completely healthy. The countess was surprised how quickly the guy recovered. The girl had the feeling that there was no poison at all. Smiling, the prince asked how she found out about this. Leon became convinced that the girl was indeed a healer. Arian was sure that the guy was like that, despite his age, because they messed around with him. Bowing, the blonde said that if she was done with her business, she was already leaving. Firmly grabbing Arian's wrist, the prince asked her to wait a little. The guy explained that he was a little worried. He asked the girl if she could sit with him a little longer. The healer suggested that he call someone else. The blonde was surprised because other ladies tried to flirt with him by any means, but this one tried to get away by any means. Arian was surprised at how narcissistic the prince was. The girl was amazed, because in a previous life they had never spoken. The healer explained that all people were different. She dreamed of leaving this room as quickly as possible. Arena understood that she had to say something. The countess explained that if he had only met such people, this did not mean that in the future, he would also meet only such people. The girl assured that all people had different values. Taking the healer's gentle hand and looking into her sky-blue eyes, the guy asked what she thought about him. The girl assured that she thought that he was the crown prince. Leon laughed sharply at such an unexpected answer. Wiping the tears from his eyes, the blonde asked if her name was Arian. The guy asked to heal him again when he got hurt. Gently touching her hand, Leon said that she could go and promised to see her soon. The healer was very disappointed that she couldn't hit him. The girl sincerely hoped that they would never have to cross paths again. When Arian left the prince's room into the luxurious hall, she noticed that there were only servants there. The girl asked what happened to the people who were in the hall. You hold the mop tightly. One of the maids said that everyone was allowed to leave. The blonde exhaled with relief, realizing that Cassidin was okay. Arian returned home when the night garden was flooded with moonlight. The girl asked her brother where he was. The healer noticed that he was standing in the hall and communicating with some man. Smiling, the girl turned to her brother, asking how long he had to wait for her arrival. The blonde answered in the negative. The healer was amazed at how cute her little brother's face was. Arian couldn't believe it was the same man with the murderous look. The girl froze that Cassidin was communicating with the brunette. Damien muttered through gritted teeth that he was glad to meet you. The closer the duke came to the girl, the brighter the memories from her past became. The guy introduced himself as Damien Keen Dysers. The blonde tightly clutched a lock of her golden hair. Fear shone in the girl's sky-blue eyes. Arian tried to calm down because she had been preparing for this meeting from the very beginning. The duke caringly asked the healer if everything was okay. The brunette noticed that she had turned very pale. Pulling a smile onto her pale face, the girl assured that everything was fine and thanked her for the experience. Bowing, the countess introduced herself as Arian Serkia. Peering intently into the eyes of the blonde, the girl asked Damien what he was talking about with her younger brother. The guy was a little taken aback when he learned that Cassidin was the girl's younger brother. The brunette noticed that they didn't look like brother and sister at all. Damien explained that he was late due to work and was about to return since the reception was canceled. The guy claimed that he met the blonde completely by accident. Ariani said that someone poisoned the crown prince. Damien said that he had no idea that something so terrible would happen at the ceremony in honor of Leon's birthday. The healer knew that inside the guy was very happy about this. The girl understood that her ex-fiancé did not know his place and was striving for the throne. Arian said that she completely agreed with the Archduke. The brunette was a little taken aback, asking how she knew his status. The healer explained that everyone knew about the Dairo's family. The girl explained that all the articles were written about him. The blonde reminded him that he had recently won a fencing competition. 
Having straightened his raven feather hair and the strands of which the moonlight played, the Duke assured that they were just lucky. Arian knew that Cassidin had defeated the brunette when he competed for the first time. The healer still remembered how the guy was out of breath then. A sincere smile appeared on the girl's face as she vividly remembered how Damien's honor and pride were trampled underfoot like a piece of paper. The brunette asked the lady why she was in the palace at such a time. The guy noticed that everyone else had left long ago. The healer thought about the answer. Luckily for the girls, the massive knights came up and grabbed the Archduke by the arms. Resisting, the guy asked what they allowed you to do. The brown-haired man sternly informed Damien that he would have to go with them. The knight explained that this was an order from his highness. Covering her malicious grin with her hands, the blonde asked how this could happen. Placing her hand on her brother's back, Arian said that she knew very well that he needed to talk to her about a lot of things. The blonde said that it was already quite late, and they should return to the estate. Dim kerosene lamps barely illuminated the forest path. The horse walked uncertainly along the gloomy roads of a huge forest. Peering into her brother's eyes, the healer asked why he acted in such a way. Arian noticed that he didn't tell her anything at all. The girl told Cassidine that she did not blame him. The countess understood that Cassidine's mask was completely removed so that it could not even hide his trembling eyes. To her great regret, Arian knew that if the truth was revealed, not only the slave, but her family would suffer. Peering into his amethyst eyes, the girl asked whether he was the prince of the kingdom of Haran, or a slave or someone else. The healer asked him to protect his life first. Holding the healer tightly to the chair, the blonde explained that if he kills her right in this place, then there will be no one left who will know his true identity. Cassidine, asked his sister, wants to say her last words with her tender lips. The blonde ordered the girl to speak when she learned his secret. The countess showed feigned sympathy and said that he was lying to himself. The brother asked the girl if she understood the situation she was in. Arian explained that he was very stupid. The blonde said that he tried to injure the wrong person. I don't even know who his real enemy was. Events quickly moved back eight years. Halkin Dyers, Damien's real father, led the conquest of Haran. It was enough for the cruel ruler to simply destroy the entire kingdom. This was mentioned in a little-known prophecy that was composed by the prophet of the Seville Empire, who had long since passed away. Arian understood that she herself did not know this about Damien, so the blonde could not find out about it. The guy hovered over his sister and asked if she was lying to him now. The healer was surprised to hear this from someone who lied to her about everything. The blonde explained that she had always been sincere around her brother. The countess was amazed that even at that moment, he believed that she was lying to him. Loosening his grip a little, the former slave asked if she regretted taking him. Ariani assured that she never regretted it. The girl understood that he probably wanted her to regret her decision. The countess understood that she could not give him the answer that he had been waiting for. The blonde explained that no matter what you said, he was her dear family member. The girl hugged Cassidin tightly. Arian was amazed, because even she was not familiar with this soft and gentle voice with which she calmed her younger brother. The countess thought it was rather funny that she was the one using Cassidin. When the blonde reached her father's estate, she realized that it was a very quiet and sad night. The mistress asked Sasha to prepare a hot bath for her. She hurried to fulfill the order. Arian asked the maid to find her books about the kingdom of Haran. The blonde said that documents and even rumors would be useful to her. The healer asked the brown-haired woman to prepare all the information she could find about this long-vanished kingdom. Arian asked the maid if she wanted more precious stones. The brown-haired woman, embarrassed, said that it was not worth it. She remembered that the mistress had already given her a whole bag last time. In a hurry, Sasha announced that they would immediately prepare the bathroom for the mistress. The healer was delighted with the girl's sweet behavior. Ariani looked around and knocked on her brother's door. It opened with a startling creak. Smiling, the girl asked if Cassidin wanted to talk before going to bed. They sat opposite each other in awkward silence. Moonlight penetrated through the huge windows, snatching silhouettes from the semi-darkness. For a long time, no one dared to start a dialogue first. The blonde, pouring herself a cup of hot aromatic drink, noticed the tea leaves that helplessly stretch down, or sea waves that soothe, like a lie at a certain moment. Arian looked down, said that the pain that seems incurable and all the things that made the guy suffer will one day definitely end. The healer understood that his brother was ready to go to the bottom at any moment, but she also had many contradictions. The girl realized that she should not have mentioned this because she too was silent about her obsession with the past, named Damien. Jumping up sharply, the healer gently touched her brother's shoulder. The blonde explained that the guy shouldn't worry. Arian remembered that, as usual, she would not do anything even if he lied to her again. Leaning over her brother's ear, the healer whispered so that he would not forget that despite his past, now she was his family. 
The girl told Cassidine that he could always use her. The blonde explained that if he wants to order something, she is ready to even get her hands dirty to fulfill it. Jumping up sharply from his seat, the guy asked his sister if she was thinking about anything at all. The blonde asked if she understood what she was talking about. Cassidine explained that he understood that if she began to insult him, as an ungrateful slave who dared to do so, she forgot her gratitude. Her brother asked her why she didn't accuse him. Cassidine explained that there was no guarantee that he would not do the same thing next time. The countess explained that if he really wanted to hurt her, he would have already done it. The healer realized that for people who had to become creatures in order to survive, it is completely normal to be only on their own side. Arian understood that the month she devoted to him had not passed. The blonde noticed that her brother was becoming more and more like her. Sharply grabbing him by the shoulders, the countess reminded him that he had done exactly the same thing as her. The girl recalled that it was she who found him and accepted him into the family. The blonde said that it was her fault. Arian reported that she treated his wounds by continuing to tear them apart. Smiling, the sister asked Cassidin to forgive her. The blonde was surprised that her brother left so quickly. Soon the guy sat down on his soft bed and thought. All this time, some unpleasant feeling was squeezing his chest. The guy realized that the girl had the appearance of a nun, with a broad outlook on life. Cassidin realized that his sister did not have such a thing that she thought or was sad. The blonde realized that Arian had to give up a lot. Looking in the mirror, the guy realized that a beautiful appearance was poison for a slave. The blonde understood that people didn't care if he was wounded or bleeding. They were only interested in his strong, beautiful body. Cassidin tried so hard to hide his past life in order to survive that he could not afford to fall into despair. The blonde couldn't understand why he was doubting at this moment. The guy understood that there were many things that he did not understand. His head was filled with different thoughts and emotions. Cassidin was surprised that he felt a strange sense of security next to such a suspicious girl. The guy was overwhelmed with a feeling of defeat. Throwing a robe over his work, the blonde straightened his luxurious silver hair. He persistently knocked on the door, addressing his sister. The guy told Arians that he wanted to know more about her. The brother explained that he wanted to apologize and hear her voice. Cassidin said that his body temperature had recently risen. The healer worriedly asked if he was in pain. He put the blonde's hand on his heart and explained that the temperature was getting higher. Cassidy asked his sister what happened to his body. He looked with love at the one he was ready to kill a couple of hours ago. The blonde was delighted with the beauty of the girl. The guy said that the healer's beauty blinded his eyes every time, and his hands were very tender, soft, warm. Sharply retreating from him, Arian was amazed that the large scar on his hand was a burn. The blonde man stepped back from his sister, looking at her in surprise. The girl noticed that she had many marks from knives and axes. One of them was from prolonged malnutrition. The countess explained that even on a gladiator, artificially applied marks are immediately visible. The girl assured that some of them did not appear during the battle. Arian asked if he was tortured. There was only bewilderment on his brother's face. The healer asked her to confirm her assumption. The girl asked the guy to sit down for a while. The blonde covered her tender amethyst eyes with an elegant hand. After a few moments, the healer used her magic. Bright rays filled the gloomy room. The blonde said that she was ready and opened her eyes. The guy looked at his body with confusion. There was surprise in Cassidin's eyes. My sister said that she used the ointment that she told me about last time. Smiling, the girl said that if she had known, she would have immediately cured him then. The healer was surprised that despite all his pain, he could not say about it. The blonde asked for forgiveness, explaining that she understood how difficult it was for him. She gently touched his hand, calling him her beloved little brother. The countess said that he could not worry and go to bed. Sitting by her bed, Cassidin realized that it was he who was trapped. With a shaky breath, the brown-haired woman burst into the room, saying that the lady needed to get ready as soon as possible. The lady calmly combed her luxurious golden hair and asked what all the fuss had been all about since the morning. With shining eyes, Sasha announced that His Highness the Prince had arrived at the estate. The blonde asked why he came. Shrugging her shoulders, the maid said that he said that he wanted to see her in person. The brown-haired woman explained that he was waiting for Arian in the living room. The brown-haired woman invited the mistress to comb her hair. After hesitating a little, Arian asked if he had said anything more. The healer reassured herself that the prince had not discovered that Cassidin was guilty of attempted murder. The maid suggested that His Highness fell in love with the lady at first sight. Sasha explained that despite the horror that had happened, the evening passed and he came to see her. A little embarrassed, Arian doubted the assumptions of her personal maids. The blonde's face showed no emotion. The healer was sure that he came because of his curiosity, even after what happened. The girl assumed that the prince had no business at all. 
Arian admired the patience of Cassidan, who served the ruler for many years. The brown-haired woman said that the entire empire was upside down. The girl said that the suspect in the attempted murder is Archduke Damien. Sasha explained that she was in an imperial dungeon. The maid could not understand what the brunette lacked if he did such a thing. The girl explained that there was no precise evidence, so the Archduke could be released soon. The healer understood that yesterday's evidence was not entirely logical. The girl realized that Damien, whom she knew, could get out of such a situation even if the truth was guilty. Arian knew that her former lover, when released from prison, would try to find the real criminal. The Countess suggested that if he found out the truth, he would force Cassidine to join him. The blonde understood that she would need to meet with someone on her side and resolve everything. Unfortunately, Arian could not find more evidence of Damien's guilt. The girl planned to create a dramatic meeting. Interrupting the mistress's thoughts, the brunette asked when she wanted to get dressed. Ariane explained that she wanted to dress as luxuriously as possible. My brother met the countess and asked where she was in such a hurry. The girl, without slowing down, explained that a man was waiting for her in the living room. Cassidy asked if he could come with her. A little embarrassed, the blonde explained that it would be inconvenient. The brother asked Arian why she was against it. The healer understood that the blonde was an interested party who was trying to poison the prince. Smiling, the guy suggested that the guest was very important. Arian understood that the beast, which had failed to carry out its manipulations, was no longer afraid to show everything that was real. The blonde couldn't understand why this made her so happy. Cassidine remained standing there, completely confused. Leon met the girl with a radiant smile. The prince said that he almost died of boredom while he was waiting for her. The healer understood that he had recently almost died for real. Bowing, Arian asked for forgiveness for being late and greeted the small son of the Empire. The blonde, explaining that there was no need to behave so formally, reminded that this was not the first time they had met. The girl could not understand why he pretended to be so friendly. Arian reminded herself that she needed a prince to meet Damien. The blonde tried to remain calm. The small son of the Empire assumed that the Countess was interested in his such an early visit. Without hesitation, the blonde decided to say everything straight. Stretching out his hand, Leon offered the Countess the pack as his wife. Smiling, the prince assured that his father also agreed with him. The guy said that he really was grateful that the healer saved his life. The blonde asked if it was true that the girl's family had amassed their fortune through mining. Leon reminded the girl that the family of healers, which receives the protection of the imperial family, cannot afford much because of the written rules. The blonde explained to the girl that his highness was also worried about this. Arian said that she was very embarrassed by such a sudden proposal. The healer said that she had enough of everything in life. The guy couldn't believe that she was ready to miss the chance to become a noble bride of the Empire. The blonde sincerely thanked her for such warm words and explained that she needed feelings. Smiling, Leon said that the healer was not at all what he expected. The guy told the lady that she was a very interesting person. Behind the countess, there was a creak of the door. The girl could not understand who dared to enter without knocking. Piercing the uninvited guest with his amethyst eyes to the depths of his soul, Cassidin asked for forgiveness for interfering with the conversation. Cold beads of sweat began to slowly flow down the blonde's face. The countess realized that despite the fact that the guy's face did not reveal the guy's emotions, he was really apologizing. The blonde explained that he brought them cookies because he assumed that they would be very hungry. The girl assumed that her brother took the treats from Sasha. The prince thanked the guy for his concern, saying that he could leave here. The blonde moved from his place and rolled his eyes at me. His highness repeated once again that he could be free. Arian asked for forgiveness and explained that he was her younger brother. The second son of the Empire noticed that they did not look alike at all due to the fact that one had silver hair and the other had golden hair. The guy noticed that their eyes were completely different colors. Smirking, Leon suggested that they were not of the same blood. The healer explained that despite the fact that they had no family ties, he was still her only younger brother. The prince noticed that the guy was too handsome to be recognized as just a younger brother. The blonde understood why the girl was so demanding. Ariane said that her brother was right. He was very handsome. Leon laughed. It would be very good if this handsome younger brother left the room and did not interfere with the conversation. The second son of the Empire reported that they discussed very important things. Cassidine asked why he couldn't listen to their conversation. The blonde said that if he wanted it so badly, he could tell. Smiling, the prince said that the guy's sister would soon become his wife. Angry, Arian reminded him that she had refused him. Leon explained that if she really wanted to refuse his offer, then she would have to come to the palace in person. The blonde explained that tomorrow morning he would be waiting for her at the palace fountain. The guy asked his beloved to come alone. 
The brother asked Arian whether the prince was telling the truth. The countess said that this was not a lie. Frowning his eyebrows, the blonde asked if she would go to the castle tomorrow. Lowering her eyes, the girl said that she would have to do this. Cassidy warned the blonde that she had better not do this. After her questioning look, the guy warned that it could be a trap. The blonde explained that because the principal asked the girl to come alone, he felt uncomfortable. The brother explained to Arians that he did not like Leon's face. Smiling, the countess asked him if he could understand people by their faces. Wary, the blonde said that he could understand people by their eyes. Cassidy warned that the second son of the Empire seemed to him a bad person. The healer said that she completely agreed with him. Ariane explained that she also did not like the prince at first sight. Hope appeared in the amethyst eyes. The former gladiator asked his sister if their opinions agreed. The girl said that she didn't like the character of the second son of the Empire at all. The healer was very pleased to chat about the crown prince behind his back. The guy became gloomy and asked his beloved what she thought about him when they first met. Arian noticed that the handsome man was very similar to her. The girl was unable to rationally explain her feelings. The countess was very attracted to his eyes, behind which a big story was hidden. Sadness, similar to the light of dawn and complete emptiness. Arian asked her brother what he thought of her when they first met. The guy rolled his eyes and said that it was a secret. The girl understood that she should not expect an answer from a liar. Arian asked whether he considered her a good person or a bad one. The blonde said that he did not know this. The healer recalled that a few moments ago, he said that he could distinguish people by their eyes. Lightly pinching his shoulder, the girl asked what kind of person he thought she was. The blonde quickly hit her on the arm, trying to stop her attempt to hurt him. Cassidy asked for forgiveness, explaining that she did it by accident. The guy asked his sister if she hated him. A little taken aback, the healer asked why she should hate him. Cassidy explained that she was a very strange person, neither good nor bad. The countess was surprised that for the first time in a long time, he gave her an honest answer. The guy was very embarrassed, and his face was covered with a noticeable blush. Arian asked why her brother's face turned red. The healer noticed that his fever had not subsided since last night. Cassidy told his sister that it was because of her, but after a few seconds he asked her to forget it. Taking another book from the huge library, Arian thought about how real brothers and sisters felt. The girl picked up another book and couldn't understand why there was no information about the kingdom of Hairan. The countess could not understand when her brother managed to get into the library. The girl reminded herself that her brother would not have left any traces of breaking into the imperial castle. Wary, the blonde realized that there was another problem. She didn't know how to treat Damien when they met. The countess dreamed of bringing to the surface all of Damien's actions and bringing him down to the very bottom. The girl was determined to act like an idiot. She understood Cassidine's feelings, because she still could not forget the pain of the day she died. Clutching a pocket watch in his hand, the prince noticed that his beloved had already arrived. Bowing in a curtsy, Arian greeted the small son of the Empire. The girl was wearing a blood-red dress with black ruffles that fit her figure perfectly. The healer told the guy that she came to this meeting to refuse his offer. Leon asked his beloved not to rush so much. The guy extended his hand to the girl and offered to sit down and talk. Noticing that the prince was nervous, the girl said that he could calm down. She explained that she did not bring anyone with her. Smiling, the blonde noticed that Arian was quite smart and had the power of healing. The countess interrupted his speech, warning him that someone might have overheard them. Smiling, Leon said that if she was so worried about this, she could become his wife at that very moment. The blonde noticed that he didn't love her. The girl reminded that she was a healer, not a toy. Smiling, the guy asked whether love is needed for marriage. The blonde reminded that marriage is in the interests of both parties. Leon explained to her that she was missing out on the chance to have the highest status in the Empire, and the Imperial family would receive a powerful healer. The guy suggested that this was a good deal for both parties. Arian said through clenched teeth that her current status suited her quite well. The blonde said that if he didn't mind, then she had a request. The healer reported that Archduke Damien was responsible for the attempted poisoning. The girl said that according to rumors, he was in an Imperial dungeon. Having noticeably darkened, Arian asked if she could meet with the defendant. Wary, the prince asked his beloved why he wanted to meet the criminal so much. The girl explained that if he allowed it, she could show him her driving skills. The small son of the Empire reminded that she could not use her abilities if the person was not injured. Grinning, Arian asked if she had ever claimed that she could only use her skills on people. The countess said that she could make the flowers that he stepped on bloom again. Looking at his beloved in surprise, Leon looked at the plant with falling petals. The blonde approached the plant and placed her hands on the delicate sea-green petals. The flower quickly began to raise its stalks and leaves to the bright rays of the sun. 
Looking at her abilities, the guy couldn't believe his eyes. The blonde asked the healer how she was able to do this. Leon assumed that the girl was a magician. Arian refuted his suspicion by saying that she was just a healer. The guy picked the flower with a deft movement of his hand. The healer's face showed confusion. The blonde said that if the flower remains here, then someone will be able to step on them. Leon promised to put a plant in his room. The guy told the countess that he only had one question left. He asked the girl why she needed the Archduke. Leon said that he was curious why the girl decided to take such a step in order to meet him. The blonde assumed that his highness would ask about this. The girl understood that it would be very suspicious to confess her love to a person accused of treason. Wiping away tears, the blonde said that she wanted to see the Archduke one last time. Arian realized that this would look even stranger, given that the prince was proposing marriage to her. The guy asked the healer for some reason she didn't answer. The countess was amazed that his patience limit was only a few seconds. The girl asked the prince whether he considered Damien a criminal. Leon explained that the brunette lacks the motivation to do this. The prince explained that there was no definitive evidence. The blonde was sure that this was done by someone who had been offended by the imperial family for a long time. Arian asked whether the archduke was accused only because he arrived late for the reception, and because this plant blooms only in the north. Let's see the prince's wariness. The healer explained that she found out what poison he was poisoned with while she was treating him. The girl said that she felt guilty, because the archduke was accused for her word that the plant had grown only in the north. The blonde explained that she would like to see how he chewed in the dungeon. With surprise, Leon asked the healer why she considered it her fault. The guy asked how the truth could be a crime. The countess explained that the truth could sometimes turn out to be a lie for someone. Extending his hand to her, the prince said that he wanted to personally escort her to the dungeon. The blonde was jubilant that her plan had gone well. One of the knights carefully watched the couple in love. Turning around, Arian could not understand why the knight wore an iron helmet in such warm weather. The blonde was sure that the guy was very hot. A flock of scavengers circled around a huge stone tower that served as a dungeon. Walking along the long, dark corridors, the healer asked whether this tower was a dungeon. The guy was amazed that Arian had never been here. Leon explained that usually the Imperial dungeons were located away from the main castle complex. Turning sharply, the blonde asked the knight why he continued to follow them. Through the massive helmet, Arian saw amethyst eyes. The prince asked if the emperor ordered him to monitor them and report on everything he did. The blonde couldn't understand why he had to put in so much effort. Leon asked his beloved if the girl knew why he asked her to come alone. The prince admitted that the eyes of Lady Arian's brother seemed very disturbing to him. The healer was well aware that Cassadin was annoyed that his assassination attempt had failed. The countess assured that her brother was very shy. The blonde reported that he noticed something strange in the amethyst eyes when his little brother looked at her. Leon thoughtfully said that this was not like the way a brother looked at his sister. The guy explained that despite the fact that the shadows were connected by blood, having interrupted the prince, the healer said that Cassadin was a very dear family member to her. Arian reported that he put her in a difficult position when he spoke in such a light about her only younger brother. The blonde was amazed at how attached the girl was to her brother. Smiling, the healer assured that he was the most important person in the world for her. The countess informed his highness that it was enough for her that he accompanied her to this place. The guy was a little taken aback when he found out that the blonde was going to go to a dirty prison alone. Leon assured her that she didn't need to bother so much. The healer recalled that the Archduke, because of her words, was accused of attempted murder. Arian explained that she would not be able to talk calmly if he was nearby. Turning to the knight, his highness asked him to come up. The prince explained that he would not be able to take my lady directly to the Archduke. Leon warned the subject that if anything happened, he would be fully responsible. The blonde asked the guy what his name was and what unit he was from. Trying to rectify this situation, Arian assured that she would quickly talk to the criminal and return. The blonde assured that there was no need to worry so much about her integrity and safety. Smiling, Leon said that since the reception in honor of his 20th birthday was interrupted last time, therefore a large reception would soon be held again. The guy assured that they would be able to see each other again in the coming days and promised to send Ariani an invitation. The blonde warned that the girl could not refuse. The prince promised to take care of the forget-me-not flower that she gave him until then. When Leon disappeared into the darkness of the long corridors, the girl asked her brother why he was in this place. A little taken aback, the knight asked if his sister knew about this from the very beginning. Smiling, the blonde asked how she could not recognize her brother. Arian asked the guy how he was able to steal the uniform from the guard. The guy insisted that he did not steal, but borrowed. Cassidin claimed that the owner of the form would lie unconscious for a day or so. The healer was amazed that he talked about such things as if it were some kind of trifle. 
The girl asked her brother if he had thought about what could happen if he got caught. The blonde assured her that he knew the movement of the knights and their gait. Hanging over his sister in massive armor, the guy asked if she was worried about him. Smiling, the countess asked her brother how she could not worry. Arian assured that not a day passed, that from morning to night she did not worry about him. Smiling, the guy said that he was very pleased to hear something like that. The countess asked him if he had arrived at the castle, out of worry. Cassidine explained that if this were not true, he would not have acted so stupidly. Stretching out his hand, the blonde asked his sister to follow him, explaining that he knew the structure of the prison very well. He held a massive torch tightly in one hand and his sister's tender hand in the other. The girl smelled a strong smell of mold and dampness. Arian was amazed at how much the prison resembled a labyrinth in its structure. Cassidin explained that it is almost impossible to escape from this place. He said that at the appointed time, a person came here to distribute food, and the prison system worked well even without guards. The guy asked his sister who she came to see in such a place. Lowering her eyes, the blonde assured that he would recognize this man when he saw him. Soon the couple arrived on the eighth floor. The rays of the sun penetrated into this rotten place through massive bars. Damien was reading a book, not paying attention to the guest. The girl remembered very well that she had once been able to fall in love with this black hair and emerald eyes. Then the healer did not know what was hidden behind such a beautiful wrapper. Approaching the bars, the healer asked the guy if he remembered her. The archduke mentioned the girl's name and status, saying that he could remember people even if he had only seen them once. The brunette jumped up sharply from his seat and said that he remembered her knight very well. With a tight smile, the blonde assured that it was just a palace knight who brought her to this place. The archduke assumed that he had confused the guy with someone else. Smiling, the brunette asked why the knight escorted her straight to prison to him. The guy reminded that outsiders were not allowed to enter. Arian said that the prince gave her permission and even took her to the entrance to the tower. The brunette was amazed to hear that the prince personally escorted Milady. The guy asked if he could ask why this happened. Coming closer to the bars, the blonde announced her confidence in Damien's innocence. Pressed against the cold bars, Arian told the Archduke that she fell in love with him at first sight. Smiling, the guy said that he understood the lady and decided to listen to her. The blonde asked in surprise if he believed her. Damien asked the Countess if she considered her behavior in such a situation suspicious. Arian assured that she had come to save him despite the danger of the situation. The Countess burst into tears and asked why he was so cold towards her. Covering her face with her hands, the girl said that if she had known that he would talk to her like that, she would not have come here at all. Wary, the brunette asked if she really fell in love with him at first sight. Pressing herself even more against the bars, the girl asked why she would otherwise come to such a rotten place. Hariani admitted that she herself did not believe that such vivid feelings were possible until she met him. The blonde understood that the next step was to embarrass herself and sigh at every word. Continuing her game, the girl said that she fell in love with this black hair the color of a raven's wing, and eyes that were eclipsed by the shine of the stars. The countess assured that she absolutely loved his sharp, stubborn chin and his quiet, calm voice. There was rage in the amethyst eyes of the knight behind the lady. Arian was ready to endure such shame as long as she wanted for the sake of her goal. The girl asked if the brunette could imagine how sad she was when she found out that her lover was arrested before she could say a word. Arian decided to appear in front of him as a complete idiot who is easy to control. Confused, the girl said that for the sake of this meeting, she had to beg the prince and it was very difficult. Looking at her warily, Damien assumed that the lady was very friendly with his highness. It was not in vain that Arian prepared for the conversation, since the guy was interested in this. She remembered that in a past life, relations between the prince and the archduke were strained. Damien specifically tried to get closer to his highness, but the principal was not particularly keen on such treatment. Arian understood that although the prince's proposal caused her shock, it could also become a stumbling block. Arian understood that if she was too friendly with him, it might arouse suspicion. The girl reassured herself that, given the prince's character, if she easily accepted his proposal, the young man would quickly lose interest in her. The blonde planned to keep Lion at a distance, fueling his interest and using his influence on Damien. The healer assured that his highness assigned this knight to her. The girl asked the archduke to ask Lion personally if he did not trust her. The healer asked to tell her in more detail why he was late for the appointment. The blonde assured that she would be able to talk to the prince personally and explain that the young man was innocent. Going deeper into his cell, the guy suggested. Smiling, Damien asked the girl to explain in detail what kind of relationship she had with the prince. In return, the brunette offered to tell him the reason for his lateness to the appointment. The archduke explained that he suddenly wanted to know what kind of person she was. 
the girl understood that it was easier for him to die than to lose. Arian was surprised that he was saying that she supposedly needed to talk about the prince in front of the Imperial Guard. The healer assumed that the brunette did not believe her at all. The girl said that she looked very stupid when she became interested in him. Turning away, Arian said that he was making her out to be a calculating schemer, although she had come to help him. The blonde turned around and began to quickly leave. The girl was greatly offended that he tried to trample her sincerity in the mud. The countess told the guy that she now understood what kind of person he was. Damien quickly ran to the bars and began to squeeze the iron bars tightly. The brunette supposed that he shouldn't have been so rude to her. The guy begged Arian not to leave and promised to tell the reason for his lateness. The archduke explained that if she left, he would be worried. Damien explained that he was preparing a special gift for the prince and a lot of time was spent preparing the gifts before the reception. The guy claimed that he had a rather rare thing and he needed a lot of time to deliver the gift to the duchy. Raising her sky-blue eyes, the girl asked what that gift was. The brunette said that he would tell Arian because he wanted the prince to know about it. The guy stated that the gift was a slave with impressive skills and history. The brunette said that he had to try hard to prevent him from committing suicide. The reason for the delay was that the slave wanted to bite off his tongue. Damien, seeing the surprise on the girl's face, said that she had misunderstood him. The guy said that talented slaves were difficult to find, and they were sold for a considerable amount. Damien recalled that a few months ago, one of the gladiator slaves was sold for five billion. The healer knew very well that slaves were treated worse than cattle. The girl could not understand how it was possible to think of giving a slave to the prince for his birthday. The blonde decided to check this out, since this trick could be to hide health problems. Arian asked to hand over the slave to her. The girl recalled that Damien was locked in prison only because the poisonous plant that was discovered during the investigation grew only in the north. The countess said that that flower was the main ingredient of the poison, and the guest was late for the reception. Smiling, the girl assured that she personally discussed this situation with the prince. With surprise, the brunette asked who could do such a thing. The duke said that he immediately found the accusation that he was simply late for an appointment strange. The blonde assured that if he sent the slave, she would speak to the prince and ask him to reconsider the decision to imprison him. She believed that the slave would be direct evidence of his innocence. The girl insisted that it was painful that they were so wary of her. With her hand on her heart, Arian claimed that she allegedly could not leave the brunette in such a difficult moment. The brunette agreed to the proposal and promised to order his servant to send her a slave. The archduke said with a sly glance that he sincerely hoped to see Milady Arian again. Shyly covering her face with her hands, the blonde asked if he asked her on a date. Arian rejoiced that he took the bait. The archduke assured that he would tell her all the details when he would be released from prison. The brunette expressed hope that an agreement could be reached, and she knew that Damien would not miss the opportunity to get information about the prince. The countess promised to look forward to their next meetings. The brunette said that he sincerely hoped to spend time together soon. The girl planned to use it for her own benefit. Placing a small piece of paper in front of the lady, the brown-haired woman reminded her that she had asked to find information about the kingdom of Heron. Sasha said that she personally was unable to get anything, so she had to turn to an informant. With excitement, Arian assured that it was very dangerous to wander alone through dark alleys. The maid assured that she only met one person when she went shopping. The girl claimed that thanks to his tip, she found several necessary people. The brown-haired woman explained that this was not enough, and because of this, she figured out how to effectively use the precious stones that the lady gave her. The girl claimed that she had heard that there was a man in this place who knew a lot about the kingdom of Hiran. Arian was going to meet him, and she suggested that the next morning we go to the appointed place. The moonlight dimly illuminated the room. A small cup of hot aromatic tea stood on the table. Arian went out onto the balcony to get some fresh air. Gusts of wind blew her golden hair. The countess turned around, hearing the creak of the door behind her. She was incredibly happy to learn that Cassidin had finally returned. The guy's face was gloomy and unwavering. The girl asked her brother to sit down and tell her what happened. The healer suggested that he was caught when he was returning the knight's uniform. The brother denied Arian's assumption. The countess asked why her brother had such a gloomy expression on his face. Visibly worried, the guy asked Ariane if she liked green eyes. The blonde suggested that the girl didn't like him, only because he had amethyst eyes rather than green. The healer asked what kind of nonsense he was talking about. Arian asked why she should hate him because of his eye color. The blonde couldn't understand why she said this to Damien. The healer assured her brother that she loved him most of all. The girl tried to prove to the young man that the color of his eyes or hair does not matter. She claimed that no matter how he looked, she would still love him more than anyone. 
Trying to contain his rage, Cassidine broke a mug of hot tea. The blonde asked his sister how many people she had already managed to deceive. The guy asked if he was like that. Piercing Arian with his gaze, the blonde ordered her not to turn away. Drops of hot tears began to slowly flow from the healer's eyes. After the girl felt his power, she realized that it was difficult to breathe. The guy ordered his sister to tell the truth while looking into his amethyst eyes. Blondinov was amazed at how she could portray such an innocent expression on her face. A massive hand tightly squeezed the healer's neck. To her regret, Arian could not even answer a word. With the last of her strength, the blonde pushed the young man away and tried to catch her breath. The guy suggested that from the outside, one might think that he was doing something bad. He assured that he had not even started yet. The countess said that if he sincerely longs for this, then she is ready to endure, since he was her only younger brother. Arian insisted that she could endure it if it made him feel good. The healer clarified whether this really made him feel better. The girl was sure that Cassidin was not that kind of person. The handsome man advised me not to be mistaken about him anymore. The blonde understood that he only showed his character because he could not trust others. The girl sincerely believed that the guy was soft and sensitive inside. Approaching him, the blonde assured him that she would always be on his side. Cassidin muttered through his teeth that he hated her. Gently stroking his courageous face, the girl said that everything was fine. Arian assured that he could even use her for his own purposes, if after that he stopped reproaching himself. Soon the guy, with his eyes downcast, headed towards the exit. The healer realized that at some points she agreed with his words. The girl reminded herself that she kept it here to use it. The countess was sure that the prince of a destroyed kingdom must have something to tell. She could not understand why the young man did not talk about his past and the kingdom of Heron. Sympathy flashed in the girl's heart because she understood that Cassidine's homeland had turned to ashes because of the prophecy. The countess was determined to find out all the details herself. Sasha asked my lady if she really needed an escort. The maid suggested that it was worth taking at least Cassidine with her. The brown-haired woman was worried that something could have happened to Arian during such a dangerous journey. The healer explained that she was not alone because Sasha was next to her. The blonde could not afford to drag her brother to this place and dig up information about him in front of his nose. The girl drew the attention of the maid that this path could hardly be called a road. The countess asked Sasha if she was sure that at least someone lived on this mountain. The girls walked through a dense forest. The sun's glare played on the branches of massive trees. The maid carefully peered at the small piece of paper trying to find the way. The brown-haired woman assured that if this path turned out to be wrong, she would severely punish the informant. A little surprised by such phrases, the lady suggested checking this information first. Soon the girls came to a small house in the middle of the forest, when the sun was at its zenith. Not confidently knocking, the countess asked if anyone was inside. Sasha suggested that they could have moved out of here a long time ago since the house looked abandoned. The blonde suggested waiting a little longer just in case. Soon the door opened with a creak, and an old man walked out with an uncertain gait. The man asked what they forgot in his house. Stepping forward and removing her massive hood, Arian said that she had heard that someone living here allegedly knew about the kingdom of Heron. The countess said that they would like to know about the reasons for the collapse of the kingdom of Heron. The blonde asked the old man his name. Taking off his hood, the man introduced himself as Notios. Looking at Arian, the man noticed that God loved her very much. The ascetic reported that despite his poor eyesight, he saw the finger of God, which was directed at the girl. The blonde was a little taken aback when she realized that the great prophet was standing in front of her. Putting his hand on his heart, the man confirmed that he had once been called that, but now he was too old for this title. The countess could not understand, because everyone was sure that he had died long ago. Nautios explained that he was paying for the stolen lives of many people because of his predictions. The prophet said that because of this, he tried to live in the shadows. The man was sure that if the girls came here, it was God's will. With his eyes downcast, Notios explained that it could be said that the kingdom of Heron fell because of his long tongue. The blonde asked what the content of the predictions was. The man suggested that God's favorite could tell about this. Notios began his story. The prophet said that in the kingdom of Chiron a real king was born, whom the world had never seen, and all countries, including the empire, would bow at his feet and would reign supreme over all living things. The blonde asked if the one in question was alive, the prophet assured that the prediction has now changed. Nautios reported that a hawk with sharp wings found a back to grab onto, and the black raven, who did not know how high he was flying, would die when the hawk hit him in the back. The prophet clarified that this was all he could tell. Arian asked if he could explain what was hidden behind the prediction. The man said that my lady herself knew about everything. 
The girl asked if she could ask one last question. The blonde asked what exactly it meant that she was God's favorite. Nadios explained rather vaguely that there were no results in the world without causes. The blonde regretted that the old man would have to move again. Sasha insisted that she allegedly couldn't even think that they would meet the seer. The girl admitted that she was sincerely surprised by this and admitted that Nadios' speech seemed incomprehensible to her. The countess thanked Sasha, once again explaining that they had an excellent harvest. The healer was sure that the black raven the prophet spoke about was Damien. The girl didn't even realize that, pretending to be disinterested in power, he was simply destroying the main enemy in Hairan. Ariani assumed that the man wanted to put his son on the throne. The blonde was very interested in how her brother would react if he learned that the man who destroyed his homeland was already dead. The healer sincerely sympathized with Cassidin, who all this time endured horrors only because he dreamed of taking revenge. The girl didn't know whether her brother would be happy if he found out that this man's son was still alive. Arian, grinning, sympathized with his younger brother, but was sincerely glad that they had a common goal. A small card in the girl's hand quickly burned out. The countess was surprised that God's love for her was so great. Letting the rest of the ashes go to the wind, the blonde doubted that she deserved it. Arian hesitantly knocked on her brother's room. The guy was surprised that she personally came to him. Approaching from behind, Cassidin asked if she had something to do. Smiling, the healer asked if she needed a reason to meet him. Opening the door, the guy invited his sister to come inside, assuring him that it would be rude to talk to her outside. Having straightened her luxurious golden hair, the blonde asked where she was that day. Removing her hand, the countess said that if Cassidin had been so curious, he could have followed her. The girl recalled that her brother never told her the truth and asked why he was so afraid. Supposedly, he was allegedly afraid that she would tell someone who he was or send him back to the arena. Ariani said that she would be very glad if all her brother's fears were dispelled. Smiling, the countess said that he could squeeze her throat tighter as much as he wanted. The girl asked to strangle her as much as he did not trust her. Cassidin abruptly threw his sister aside and asked if she was afraid of death. The blonde, breaking into a scream, asked if she had gone crazy. Soon the guy came to his senses and tightly pressed the girl's fragile body to him. The blonde asked for forgiveness, explaining that it was all his fault. The brother asked Arian not to do this again. The girl tried to remember if Cassidine asked her for something so strongly. There was sadness in his sky-blue eyes, and tears quickly welled up in his eyes. The blonde told her brother that she truly loved him. Cassidine tightly squeezed her fragile body, pressing her closer to him. Left completely alone, the guy realized how tired he felt because last night he had only thought about her and could not rest at all. The blonde knew that his sister was leaving in the middle of the night, but he didn't go out on purpose. The guy thought it best not to show how much Arian bothered him. Cassidin felt even worse, because she wasn't around. The brother could not understand why the girl went to the Imperial Castle. The blonde felt at rock bottom at that moment, when Ariani said that she fell in love with the Duke at first sight. The guy felt a storm of emotions when his sister said this to another person. He understood that his sister had truly gone crazy. The former gladiator felt himself slowly falling into a deep abyss. The guy understood that this was abnormal, because he could not let her go because he was afraid that she would disappear, like a star in the night fog. Cassidin buried his head in his hands, trying to forget about everything. The countess noticed that after that day her brother became more polite to her. Arian knew that she no longer lied and came in the middle of the night. The girls realized that she could have been too harsh with him. Arian did not regret one bit that she accepted the blackmail. The healer was very disappointed that the guy did not trust her so much. The countess wanted to check how he would behave in such a situation. She, the beautiful one, understood that she was not going to die. During breakfast, the girl realized that Cassidin began to look at her much more often and longer in complete silence. Noticing a sincere smile on his face, the countess asked what had happened. Taking his amethyst eyes away from her, the guy replied that there was nothing important. The blonde opened the newspaper, looking for the information she needed. Sasha could not believe that the Duke was claiming that his reputation was ruined, even though there was no concrete evidence pointing to him. Arian was amazed at how simple-minded the Archduke was. The healer didn't care whether he won or not. The girl understood that this was the lowest thing a person who had something to lose could do. The blonde was sure that she could finally be in peace. She was sure that he would soon offer to meet. The Countess realized that she needed to show Damien that she was supposedly on his side. A sharp noise outside distracted the girl from her thoughts. Opening the door, one of the maids told the lady that someone had sent her a gift. Surprised, the blonde asked who the addressee was. She assured that the sender was unknown, but they were told that a slave had been delivered. 
Dim rays of the sun fell through huge pieces of fabric and bars onto the emaciated body. The guy's hands were shackled and his clothes were covered with brown spots. The slave's gaze was dull. The girl realized that the Archduke's gift had already arrived. Taking a look at the arriving slave, Arian could not understand how the brunette was going to give this man to the prince. The guy's body and clothes were covered in bloody stains, and his t-shirts had many holes in them. The arriving coachman asked the fragile girl if she could definitely cope with him. The man warned that the slave was very strong. Arian said that everything was in order and asked to let the slave go. The messenger told the girl that the archduke asked her to convey that he wanted to meet with her as soon as possible. Kneeling down, the man said that the suitcase contained tranquilizers that could turn a wild animal into a helpless lamb. The man asked not to worry, claiming that the drug did not have any negative effects on health. The messenger assured that this was only to calm the furious temper. The brown-haired man said that the lady could go to the duchy if she needed more, and wishing all the best, he left. Sitting down next to the slave, the countess realized that he was already under the influence of a tranquilizer. The girl carefully peered at the arriving slave. The blonde's breath burned the soft leather of her neck. Turning sharply, the healer told Cassidin that he had scared her. The girl asked her brother if he could walk less silently. The blonde explained that this had become his habit. Smiling, the guy asked how else he could see her surprised face. Taking a look at the arriving slave, the guy asked if he was the one the Archduke was talking about. The healer's heart was full of sympathy, because she knew how it felt to be caught by Damien. Just one look at the hypodermic needle, and the slave in the cage made the healer think that she was doing something terrible. The blonde asked his sister what she was going to do. With a heavy sigh, Arian said that the arrival was just a gift. The countess said that first he needed to be washed and changed. I turned to the servants. The blonde warned that the slave is quite strong, and at least three people will be needed. The girl asked to prepare food for him in the outermost room. Noticing Cassidin's darkened face, the girl realized that he was afraid that another slave would take his place. Patting him on the back, Arian said that only he was her brother, and asked him not to make such an expression again. Events quickly moved to the luxurious imperial palace. The man asked Leon what he was thinking about. Rubbing the back of his head, the blonde asked him not to shout at him like that. The emperor wondered what could happen if someone overheard their conversation with the girl. The father explained that they might think that his wife's place is equivalent to a dog. The blonde asked his son if he thought that he asked Lady Serkia to take care of him for this purpose. Smiling, the prince said that she refused his proposal. The guy noticed that she turned out to be a really interesting woman. The blonde said that if Ariane agreed to become his wife, he would immediately lose interest in her. Leon reported that the prestige of the imperial palace could have fallen due to the attempted poisoning. The prince told his father that he had made a mistake and could not find the culprit. The blonde explained that he made the entire castle, and then the imperial family, a laughing stock. Jumping up sharply, the man asked his son how he dared to say something like that. The blonde reminded his father that if someone saw them, they might think something wrong. The man asked his son how he dared to talk to him in such a throne. The emperor wanted to tell how hard it was for him to get the position of ruler. Leon asked the man whether his responsibility for his mother's death was gone. The blonde said that he never craved the title of crown prince, or his father's love, filled with responsibility. And he asked not to call him again for such nonsense, saying that it was time for him to go. Entering his room, the guy sat comfortably on a huge bed. Leon looked at the delicate forget-me-not flowers and again remembered his beloved. The butler reported that they did not have the right size clothes for the slave, and asked what to do. Taking a look at the muscular, scarred body, Arian asked where he could come from in the estate. The girl thought that compared to the slave, her room seemed small. She saw in him forms similar to a bear and a black leopard, and she couldn't understand why Damien would give a valuable slave to the prince. The countess said that it was necessary to at least throw something on him, and she assured that it was impossible to leave a gift in this form in front of the lady. The blonde said that she herself could help him with clothes. Coming closer to the guy, the healer asked what his name was. There was only silence in response.